What is going on guys? AJ Good here at the House of Masks and I'm making a real quick video today to show off my new Trick or Treat Studios Dr. Decker mask from Nightbreed and also because I want to test out the camera on my new iPhone 7. I haven't really been using this much since I got it maybe two weeks ago and the reason is because I'm super fucking bummed that I have it. It's an awful phone. I've not been impressed with anything from it so far aside from the storage which you can get massive storage in just about any iPhone so that's kind of pointless. I was tricked into getting this phone by Sprint and they destroyed all of the footage that was on my iPhone 6 along with two years worth of photos. And yes, I didn't back it up on any sort of drive because I paid for extra storage on the phone because I wanted to skip the middleman and not use any sort of iCloud or Google Drive or anything like that. So long story short, I got tricked into this iPhone 7 and when I had everything switched over by Sprint, which took two hours by the way, they decided that they were just going to destroy the iPhone 6 that I had before with all of the stuff on it. So that's awesome. I'm pumped about it. I love it. It was a super good end of the montage for September, and it is no more. I'm very, very bummed. There was some good shit in there. Probably one of the best so far, and now it doesn't exist. Anyways, the main point of this video is to show off this Dr. Decker mask by Trick or Treat Studios. I got this in for 40 bucks second hand off of somebody. This is the mask that Corey Taylor told me that I need to have in my collection, and he was super proud that he was able to stump me on not having a certain mask. So here it is. I got it in, 40 bucks, not bad at all. So as you guys can see here, we've got a good cast all the way around, nice, even, thick pour. And uh, the paint job looks superb for it being a mass-produced mask. Definitely looks the way that it's supposed to. It fits those textures nicely. And something that I appreciate a lot about this mask is the fact that they used a real zipper that zips and unzips. I'm not going to do it all the way because I have one hand right now and that would be difficult. But as you can tell, it is a real zipper, whereas a lot of other mass-produced mask companies would use a sculpted zipper that is really dumb. We're looking at you, Rubies. It makes me wish so badly that whoever was in charge of the official Slipknot merchandise would look into Trick or Treat Studios to do the official Slipknot masks because at least then we would have decent sculpts and we could go from there with upgrading the paint jobs and the hair and the zippers and whatever else. But uh, yeah, Rubies, you're not cutting it with the Slipknot stuff, so please stop. And the Michael Myers stuff also, please stop. So obviously this thing is pretty easily upgradable and modifiable, if that is a real word. The stitching that is in the mask here right now is just paint. There's not actual stitches there, although it does look very convincing. But you could easily run your own stitching through there to give it another texture and you could definitely cut these buttons out and attach actual buttons and I think you would be all set. Give it a little bit of a repaint if you want to. I think it looks fine the way it is. Obviously, if you're going for every little single teeny tiny detail of the actual mask, you would have to repaint it. But for me, not being a huge fan of the movie and not really caring about the character, I literally only got this because Corey Taylor told me to get it. And uh, if Corey Taylor tells you to get a mask, you better get that fucking mask. So yeah, I'm definitely happy with it. $40 purchase, not bad at all. It's definitely fathead friendly for any of you big fellas out there that are gonna wanna go grab one. I would definitely recommend this mask, especially for the price. That is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching and we will see you later.